Hey, welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be teaching about three OBS plugins that we like to use on our live stream that you might not know about. Those are Stream Effects, Move Transition, and Advanced Scene Switcher. You'll find all three links to the plugins in the description below. And as always, I'm going to teach you guys what these plugins do, how to configure them, and how to get the most out of these plugins on your stream. So let's get moving. Okay, so first plugin up to bat is Stream Effects. Stream Effects is a host of shader files that you apply as a filter to video sources on your screen, such as cameras, gameplay windows, and such. And it can apply these and process these in real time for some really cool effects. So let's start off with an example from our stream. I'm gonna show you guys how to pull this effect off. Uh, we like to call it the crazy cam, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna show you guys how to combine a couple different shaders or Stream Effects shaders onto your video source to get this accomplished. Check this one out. Oh shit! Suck it! Oh my god! I mean, with my makeup. <laughs> Now that was a fun night. Let me show you how to get this done. The first thing we want to do is open up our web browser, follow the link in the description, hit the download button to go to the GitHub website, scroll to the bottom, choose your operating system. In our case, I'm just going to grab the executable for Windows. It's the installer. We're going to save it, click it when it's done and go ahead and install this. And guys, make sure that OBS is not running when you install the Stream Effects plugin. Otherwise, it'll give you an error and it won't completely install. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with adding filters to webcams and different sources. You're gonna right click on your source, which is our webcam, go to filters, under effect filters, we're gonna hit the plus sign and we're gonna choose user defined shader. We're gonna name this one rainbow because this is gonna be kind of our rainbow color effect here. And then you're going to want to check mark this box here, load shader text from file. Then we're going to tell it, you'll see it's, it's asking for a location. So we're going to hit browse. And if it does not bring you here automatically to this folder here, go ahead and direct it into this folder. This is where all of the example shaders are stored and we can start with these. There are a ton in here and they are pretty crazy. So we're going to start with the rainbow shader. Go ahead and hit open. Now that's not exactly the effect we're looking for, is it? The colors are there. What you wanna do is scroll down. These are all the variables for the effect, but what we wanna do is check mark, apply to image. Bam, we got a cool rainbow effect. Now we have one more shader to add to get the zoom effect on the camera. So let's hit another user-defined shader. We're gonna call this camera shake. You can name it whatever you want. These names don't matter. Same thing, we're gonna load the shader text from file, browse to that directory, and choose the very last shader in the list called zoom underscore blur. To get our particular effect that you saw in the example, we're gonna change the samples to 128, magnitude to one, and then we're gonna check mark the glitch box. There you have it. Now, these are effect filters, so they can be toggled on and off, either manually here, or as you've seen in previous videos from Leorn board Twitch triggers, which is what we were using in there. Anytime anyone raids, hosts, or subs, this will come on for a specified time on both of our cameras. Really cool effect, as well as our little soundtrack there. Number two is gonna be move transition, which you've probably already noticed that when I switch scenes, you see I've got a very smooth, quote unquote, move transition happening between my sources. This is super duper easy to accomplish. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of move transition in action. She ahead of me. got a Eva. Oh, I like that's my Eva. She knows yeah. about the Eva. Okay, so this is a really easy process to get this going. What we want to do is open up our web browser, use the link in the description, hit the download button. This time we're not going to get a GitHub link. Uh, we're going to open up this zip directly. Okay, we're going to save it. Open it up. Winrar, maybe one day we'll buy you. 
double click the installer and walk it through the installation process. Again, make sure OBS is not open when you're installing these plugins. Once that's done, we're going to go back over to OBS and move this in so you can see from here. You're going to go click on View, Docs, and make sure that Scene Transitions is active. Once that's checked, right here you'll get your Scene Transitions. And you'll notice in the drop down list, you've got your normal cut, fade, stinger, swipe, etc. But now you also have one called move. I highly recommend increasing your duration of the move transition uh, from the default to between 1000 to 1500 milliseconds. It gives it much more dramatic effect. You can go into these properties here and there's a ton of properties, but just by installing it, all the default stuff is really cool. But go ahead and play around with some of these um, curve sliders and the ease in, ease out, the different easing functions. They all do something a little bit different. You can highly, highly customize this. So the last plugin we're gonna be talking about today is called Advanced Scene Switcher. And this thing, guys, is super powerful and versatile. Really, really cool plugin. This plugin will allow you to automatically switch scenes without having to use a stream deck, hotkeys, a tablet, or anything. It can switch scenes based on so much criteria. It's insane. Really, your imagination is the limit. We are barely scratching the surface of it, but I want to show you guys how we utilize it and give you some ideas on how you can use it for your stream. Now the installation process is exactly the same. I don't think I need to go and show you guys how to click on a link and extract it and install it. Just make sure OBS is not running when you install the plugin and you should be good to go. All right, guys, so here we are in the RStation Twitch OBS setup. And what I'm gonna do is show you around the three different scenes that we use while we're streaming. This one is my scene. You can tell that I'm playing because my camera frame is actually highlighted. This is our dual split screen setup. And then this is Neko's screen. We play a lot of casual games and MMORPGs, so I thought it'd be a cool idea to automate the scene switching between my view, her view, and the dual view. So the way that we do that is once you have the plugin installed, go back to tools, go to advanced scene switcher. And there is a plethora of options. You can have scene switch based on almost any criteria um, you can do transition overrides so if you want to switch from scene a to scene b but you don't want to use your normal cut override or normal stinger override you can tell it here let's say uh when we go from the welcome screen over to the retro screen we want to use our stinger or move or fade this will override any previous transitions that you have defined in obs really cool feature this you can actually pause the automation if you're sitting on a certain scene you can have advanced scene switcher switch to different scenes based on an active window title which is really cool. This comes in very handy for you guys that play League of Legends and you don't want to worry about stream deck buttons or anything like that. You can have it when it goes back out to the browser window, automatically switch scenes. Uh, you can do based on executable that opens up region of the screen, wherever your mouse cursor is. If your mouse hits a particular uh, region on the screen, you can have it switch to a different scene using a transition override media that plays, files that get opened, randomize if you want. You can do it based on time. If you're idle too long, it will automatically take you to an AFK or a BRB screen. This is what we use it for. Again, barely scratching the surface. We go from our dual screen setup, 420 seconds, and switches over to my screen. Then we stay on my screen for 240 seconds and it switches to Neko's screen. And then from Neko's screen, 240 seconds back to both. And it just repeats until I stop it. Very, very powerful stuff. Cannot recommend this advanced scene switcher enough, guys. Check it out. Very, very cool. You can automate a lot of things in here, especially if you're a league player or any type of game that uses um, active windows outside of the actual gameplay. You can have this thing set up uh, and running in no time. Super, super cool. 
And there you have it, guys. That's my top three highly recommended OBS plugins that you probably didn't hear about. Maybe you have. If you have, let me know. How do you guys use these if you have heard about them? Let me know in the comments below. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we got a lot more coming very soon, so please stay tuned. My wife and I stream over on Twitch slash our station, 7 p.m. Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Come catch us anytime. We'd love to hang out with you guys. Talk tech, talk AV, talk games, whatever it is. You guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.